In the search for the perfect TV, the long-awaited Sony X95J is here. Is it something to be excited about or more of the same? And how does it stack up with other LCD-based TVs like the Samsung QN90A or even the OLEDs like the Sony A90J or A80J? All of that and more, let's get it. So back in January, I was most excited for two things. One were the new OLED panels from LG Displays, and the second was the Sony X95J, where hopefully Sony would take the pretty solid X950H from 2020 and add the XR processor and other improvements. I'll show you the TV, footage in SDR and HDR, and some tests before offering that buying advice. As I get into it, please take a second to smash the like button for this video. It really does help the channel, and while you're at it, consider subscribing. Subscribing and set the notification bell to all will then give you free access to all the TV info and advice you'll need when buying a TV. And let me know in the comments if the Sony X95J is the TV for you or any other LCD based TV or are you just 100% OLED. So like many of the 2021 Sony TVs, the X95J is packaged really well. Sort of a pain in the butt to unbox, but that's all good for the end user who only has to do it once. I'd rather have more than less. And even with a double cardboard on the screen side, there's still a styrofoam square to add more protection. Like the Sony A90J, where you're supposed to be able to remove the top of the box and then slide out the styrofoam from each side to add the feet, I'd be careful doing that. The center styrofoam is not very secure and it can easily tip if you follow their setup instructions. Probably better just to lay it down. Now I'm torn on the new feet. Last year, I really liked how the X950H and even the Sony A8H OLED had the feet that you could just pop inside the TV and you could just flip them around to be narrow or wide. But this year, the Sony has wide feet that can be set super low profile as well as raised up a couple inches to sneak a small soundbar underneath. The 75 and 85 inch sizes have a middle position for the feet that are only 24 inches wide, but this 65 inch does not have that option. The shape of the TV is fairly similar to the X950H in 2020. The X95J is slightly thinner, but Sony did not implement mini LEDs on their LCD TV lineup, so it's not a super thin LCD TV. And I'll say more about that toward the end of the video, so if you're considering buying a mini LED TV, I'd definitely stick around for that. Even without the mini LEDs, the design of the X95J is solid with a slightly thinner bezel, low profile or raised up stand, and a more OLED-like look to the TV, including the same backing as the Sony A80J. It's a pretty good looking TV. The remote for the Sony X95J is nearly identical to last year's remote. Only a couple of the app buttons are different, but Sony offers the same long skinny Bluetooth remote. They could make it a bit smaller, but what I really wished for was the same backlit remote that the Sony A90J Master Series OLED has. It just seems logical to me that the top 4K TVs in both OLED and LED would have that nicer remote. I mean, really, all the TVs should have this remote, but you can order it online if you want for 80 bucks, and I do that because the backlight comes in handy in a dark room. But is this TV even good for dark rooms? Let's turn it on and find out. Like many of the Sony TVs, the X95J has a couple of new features to talk about. One is the Google TV, which I've spoken about in the Sony A90J and A80J OLED videos, so check that out, but I'll make it short and sweet. It's still an Android-based operating system, but now it's a bit more organized under the banner of Google TV. It's a little different, slightly better, but not a huge deal. And if you have a Google account, you'll log into all your apps and the TV will display content relevant to you and your family. One app that is new and I've gotten a lot of questions about is the Bravia Core, where you can pure stream at 30 megabits per second up to 80 megabits per second if you have internet over 115 megabits per second. You also get either five or 10 titles to rent from Sony service for one or two years, depending on the TV. This X95J only gets five movies for one year, while the less expensive X90J gets 10 for two years. Not sure why Sony would do that, but honestly, I'm not impressed by the Bravia Core. I stream pretty much all content, and I really don't see much of any difference between the Bravia Core and something like Disney Plus or Netflix. In addition, the app is new and needs some development because like more basic streaming apps, you can't see where you are in a movie when skipping ahead, but I'm sure Sony will make those improvements in due time. Besides the new Google TV look, the XR processor gets a lot of hype. 
This new processor is pumping up the brightness in specific areas, creating better highlights and contrast based on how we see and what we would focus on in certain scenes. I've enjoyed the processor on the OLEDs from Sony and I'm excited to see how it looks on the X95J. The setup on Sony's can be a little complicated for new owners. The X95J starts off pretty bland until you set the brightness to 50 and turn the peak luminance and local dimming to high. You should adjust the motion and other settings to your likings, but I'm not going to go into all that here. I did a video on the A90J settings, which mostly transfer over if you want to check that out. But once I got the Apple TV connected and all of it dialed in, I started to have some fun. I'll show some HDR and gaming footage, as well as a couple important tests, but the Spectrum app is where we start for those who are watching your typical shows, sports, and movies from your cable providers. And it's a pretty good start because the brightness on this X95J is fantastic. I tried to catch a little sports center, but the Padres and Dodgers were locked up in extra innings, which still gives us a chance to see how bright and vibrant the colors are in SDR. I really have little to complain about. Superb detail, amazing color, and for the most part, the contrast is good. I didn't notice much of a downside. I mean, having many OLED TVs, I can tell it's not OLED perfect contrast, but with it being twice as bright, it's really hard to notice unless they're side by side. And I'll have more on that in the testing and buying advice. Watching this epic war movie, again, the detail and color is impeccable. Perfect skin tones, and because of how great the movie looked, I really thought it was an HDR. But nope, this is just good old fashioned cable. When you get into HDR content, it's like an additional spotlight gets turned on. It's pretty mesmerizing. And again, most people know that I prefer OLED TVs because of the perfect contrast and amazing HDR highlights. But the main reason that I consider LCD based TVs is just the extra juice that you get in full screen SDR and HDR shots. If done well, that advantage over OLEDs can be pretty dramatic, and it's what leads most reviewers to recommend LCD-based TVs for rooms with many windows where you can't control the ambient light. And I can go on and keep showing more HDR footage to amaze, but I do want to talk about a couple of the issues or areas of concern with the X95J and then get to a verdict. One thing that I was looking for was light bleeding in the widescreen shots. And while I did see some blooming when I was watching it in the dark and there was a bright scene up against those black bars, it's not as intense or annoying as some of the other panels in this price range. Now the blooming may not be as intense, but the X95J isn't quite as good as the Samsung QN90A or even the LG QNED99 with regards to its black level. As I stated, Sony didn't add many LEDs or increase the dimming zones in the TV. And I don't think that they see it as a massive issue and I'm starting to buy into that. If you look at the dimming test, anyone can clearly see the 60 bigger obvious zones. For context, the Samsung QN90A has 592 dimming zones on the 65 inch TV, so more zones is better, right? I'm not so sure. If your TV processor can't control the zones, having three or five or 10 times the zones all popping on and off and accurately can do more harm than good. The Samsung QN90A has inky black levels, but because the dimming is so aggressive, it suppresses small highlights. Many times a super bright QLED was far less impressive than my Sony A90J Master Series OLED. And on the other end, if you can't control the zones, you get issues like this shot of the 8K LG QNED99, where a simple firework against a black background lights up many little dimming zones around it and just ruins the shot. And the same sort of shot with the bigger, less aggressive zones on the X95J looks better to me. So this VA panel from Sony with the 60 larger dimming zones works for me with full screen or widescreen content. And yes, the Samsung QN90A specifically has some advantages over the X95J, like higher peak brightness, better black levels, and extremely good anti-reflective coating. But it has some downsides too. And one of those things that was a turn off on both the Samsung QN90A and the LG QNED was the poor uniformity of the panels. Each of those two TVs had some dirty blotchy areas on the screen that were noticeable right when I turned them on. So when you have a bright panning shot when watching sports or in the background, or if you're playing racing games where you move back and forth from center, seeing that dirty screen can get annoying fast. So I had to test out the X95J as Sony has been known to have a cleaner, more uniform screen. And this X95J continued that trend. Sometimes a camera captures it a little differently than what you see in person, but the screen looked very uniform. And when the shot pan left or right, that dirty screen effect is not present on the X95J. 
So just the quality control on the X95J panel is a big benefit of getting a Sony LCD-based TV. And since we're into Dirt 5 for that panning shot, I will say the X95J is a joy to game with. I've been messing around with the PS5 and the X-Series X, and the X95J is a blast while being bright and vibrant in game mode. And as an OLED snob, I do get a wow factor from this bright LCD, especially since it's a Sony and has great out-of-the-box color accuracy. And in 2021, we now have two HDMI 2.1 ports, so we can game 4K at 120 frames per second. And most people know that Sony is still pending an update to get VRR or variable refresh rate on all their 2021 TVs, but with the PlayStation, we have instant game mode, and to be honest, I was just fine with 60 frames per second on the X950H, so having 120 frames per second is good enough for me. If you're a more serious gamer, you'll have to decide if you need G-Sync or FreeSync that LG and Samsung offer. So we have a lot to unpack regarding what all this means and where the TV sits in the 2021 hierarchy. To summarize the TV first, we're talking about a very similar TV to last year's X950H, but with the new XR processor to push it a little harder and the gaming at 4K at 120 frames per second. The positives are that the X95J is very bright, has great anti-reflective coating, and still retains the VA panel. But on the other hand, there's no mini LEDs and the dimming zone count is the same as last year. So first, I just want to compare it to the LCD-based TVs from 2021, and I'll start with the IPS panel alternatives. TVs like the LG QNED 90 or 8K QN99 or even the Samsung QN85A are just not going to do it for me because even though they have many LEDs, the IPS panel wrecks the picture quality when you sit even a bit off angle. And there's just something about that mini LED and IPS combo that just exposes blooming even with increased dimming zones. And then you factor in the screen uniformity issues and I just can't recommend forking over thousands of dollars for an IPS panel. When comparing the X95J to the X90J in a simple way, the X95J is brighter and has better anti-reflective coating and looks better from the side, but the X90J has better native contrast. But now that the X95J has the same two HDMI 2.1 ports, I just see this as a budget question. If the X90J is the right price and you're not in a bright room, it'd be just fine. But if your room is really bright and the cache is there, then the X95J is the Sony LCD to target between the two. Then the main competition in 2021 to the X95J is really the Samsung QN90A. Again, the QN90A is a bit brighter, it has better black levels, but the unit I had had poor uniformity, and I couldn't not see the dirty screen once I was playing games or seeing a skyline panning left or right. In addition, Samsung lacks Dolby Vision on all of their TVs, and though it's not a deal breaker to me that Samsung doesn't have it, Dolby Vision is one of my favorite features of the Sony and LG OLED TVs, and the X95J looks incredible in Dolby Vision bright mode. So when you're starting to weigh all the factors, you have a super bright and aggressive Samsung without Dolby Vision versus a solid all-around Sony with slightly raised black levels, great highlights, and finally added HDMI 2.1. So I'd probably give Samsung Q90A a slight advantage, but I would need a very clean and uniform screen, which is why many people will opt for the X95J when it gets closer to the holidays. If I had to decide between the X95J LED TV and the Sony A90J or A80J OLED, now that's a hard call. If we're talking the same size TVs, you really have to consider your viewing conditions and content. If you're talking brighter family room, watching sports and cable, the X95J would be fantastic. If you're in a bedroom and the lights will be out, or if it's a darker theater room, of course I'd choose one of the OLEDs. But if it's an 85 inch X95J versus a 77 inch OLED, then it's the price and the conditions, and I'm sure towards Black Friday and beyond, the prices will help dictate which is the better deal. But I'm definitely happy with the X95J. It's uniformity, HDMI 2.1, the XR processor, and steady improvements year over year. But I'm still interested in what you think. Will you buy the Sony X95J or something else? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to smash the like button on the way out, subscribe, ring the bell, and just like that, you can be the installer.